Despite the enormity of his talent, when it came to music making, Harry Nilsson's name is rarely mentioned when some music fans speak about the bygone 70s era. On this beautiful day, we'll discuss why he's been largely ignored amongst other contemporaries and why he should be remembered for his lyrics more than anything. Because of the alternative ways we all consume music, some have never heard of Nilsson's work. We'd like to change that by taking a closer look at some of his most underrated songs, so pull up a chair and let's get into the third episode of Evermore Sound, Revisited. In order to tell the story of our famed songwriter, we have to begin with another band, Badfinger. Formed in 1961, Badfinger was made up of joint guitarists Pete Ham and Joey Molland, bassist Tom Evans, and drummer Mike Gibbons. Throughout their stint in classic rock, they are most remembered for their power pop influence during the 1970s. Before long, Badfinger spurred timeless hits like Come and Get It, Day After Day, and most notably, Without You, which became an infamous classic, in large part, because of Harry Nilsson's cover. Without You, whilst it has been covered by over 180 artists, it is more synonymous with Nilsson's legacy more often than not. Originally titled, If It's Love by the aforementioned Pete Ham, Without You takes on a melodious chorus with the piano arrangements to match. With inspiration for Without You coming from Ham being unable to take his then-girlfriend, Beverly Tucker out for a date. After noticing her disappointed look, Ham recalled saying, Your mouth is smiling, but your eyes are sad. With Tom Evans in tow and the night still young, Ham wrote the beginning lyrics of If It's Love, in what would later be accompanied by Evans' own relationship with his future wife. In sprawling out the heartfelt lyrics of, quote, Well I can't forget tomorrow, when I think of all my sorrow, I had you there but then I let you go, and now it's only fair that I should let you know, if it's love. To Ham's dismay, the chorus was still not up to his standards. But with the joining of forces for a song called I Can't Live, they were able to craft a song that was as sentimental as it was romantic. Released on the 11th of October, 1971, Nilsson's version is heartbreaking and oozing with anguish, something that is felt increasingly more with transparent emotions. In 2021, Rolling Stone magazine named Nilsson's cover at number 496th on the Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Songs of All Time. More than anything, Harry Nilsson's use of Caribbean sounds, while mixing effortless fusions of experimentation, greatly impacted the perception of the great American songbook. Of course, that is evident on his 1968 album, Aerial Ballet with Everybody's Talking, yet nothing would show more promise than what would follow. To this day, his most celebrated album, Nilsson Schmilson has been his most commercially successful endeavor. Nilsson trademarked the use of his unique overdub, raw vocals, and heightened lyrics to catapult the pop rock genre. Nilsson's timeless work is exemplary based around songs like Early in the Morning and Jump into the Fire. Each of those songs heavily use thumping drum patterns, electric guitar, and synchronous vocals, raising the bar for what was expected of a rock artist. While never having significant concert events or routinely touring, Nilsson achieved what so many artists can only dream of. By all accounts, his Without You ballad is most powerful when heard in demo form, coalescing into what we enjoy most from Nilsson's work. Unfortunately, on January 15, 1994, Nilsson would depart from this earth, after succumbing to the effects of heart disease with a heart attack. During that time, Nilsson was putting the final touches on his last album, Lost and Found, which would finally be released in 2019. What so many of us learn from Nilsson's work and all his rock efforts, through his silent vulnerability and intimate songwriting is his ability to transcend generations with emotional lyrics that highlight the caliber of artist that he was and remains. Though his work is far from being forgotten, he should be spoken about among other contemporaries for how he pushed boundaries and escaped the normality that trapped so many of artists who dominated the 70s era. With that said, what did you think? Leave us a comment below and subscribe if you want more content about classic rock artists and commentary that you won't hear anywhere else. Thank you for watching and considering the Evermore Sound YouTube channel.